Okay, so this tutorial is going to be about um, creating a site plan in uh, in Revit, and um, we're going to use basically the, some of the commands here on the massing and site tab, and in particular we're going to use this property line um, command here under the modify, um, sorry, on the massing and site. So uh, first thing you want to do is on your project, you want to, on the browser, just go to your site plan, so double click on the site plan. And that should take you here. So it should look like this. It should be kind of a roof plan view of your of your building. And I'm going to go back to our handout here real quick. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the uh, property boundaries. All right, and that is going to be on page 32. Uh, and it's about the one, two, third paragraph down. And actually, um, all right, so our property boundary is 142 feet in the east-west direction and 100 and... Um, 31 feet in the north south south direction. All right, so uh, to draw that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, the massing insight tab, use that property lines command, and we're going to sketch uh, the property line. All right, so let me let me go back to our Revit project. Okay, and then um, I'm going to take your computers right now. So if you guys have to move your screens to like the left or the right, um, do it real quick, and then I'll take those computer screens. Looks gray in the roof. Yeah. So let me let me grab those computers. Okay. So I should. So yeah. So here's your property line. So to do that uh, property line, what we're going to do is going to use the property line command here under masking and site. So I click on that. It's going to give you two options: create by entering the um, distances and bearings or by sketching and that's what we're going to use. We're going to use by sketching. So I click on that. It takes me into sketch mode and essentially what we're going to do is just draw a big rectangle um, and the rectangle dimensions were on that handout and so it's 142 feet in the east-west direction and 131 in the north-south south direction. So let's just do that real quick. So 142 feet this way and 131 feet down that way. Oops. All right, and then just kind of close it up. All right, and then once you've done that, then you can just hit finish. All right, and so there's our property line. So it should be this kind of double dash uh, line like that. All right, so that's where that's located. And then on the handout, what it says, oops, on the handout, what it says, um, is the eastern property line, I'm sorry, it's the northern property line is six feet from grid line A and six feet from uh, grid line nine. All right, so we just got to offset that. So we're basically this, the second step in this, once you've created your property boundary line, what we want to do is just did, then just relocate that property to the brown, brown boundary line on our building. So what I'm going to need is my column grid for that. So on my site plan, it's currently not showing up, but let's go to visibility graphics and go to annotation categories and turn on our column. Let's see. Oh, grid line, sorry. It's under grids. All right, so turn on grids. I'm going to say OK. All right, so uh, this was located, let's see, six feet above grid line A. So I'm just going to move our property to boundary line to grid line A. All right, then I'm just going to pick it again, and I'm going to move it up six feet. All right, so go six feet up. All right, then this, the eastern side was uh, six feet away from grid line nine, so I'll just move this over to grid line nine, and let's move it out six feet. All right, so it should be six feet north of A. Yep, and six feet east of nine. Good. All right, so this is our property boundary line here. And to the south of that, what we're going to do is create our parking lot. All right, so we're going to add in some parking spaces in there. All right. And then before we're going to do that, though, I want to load in a couple tags here to tag the property uh, boundary lines and also the uh, area of the pop property itself. So let's go back to that handout real quick. All right. So let's see. Once you've placed all the property lines uh, in, um, with the property lines tool, then um, what we want to do is we're going to load in. You, we're actually going to check it out here in um, 
edit mode and go back to the the little um, I guess the table. So let's go back to here. I'm going to select it and I'm going to just say edit table just to take a look at it. And it should so you'll get this table here and that's basically what we just drew and it's basically giving us the bearing um, bearing lines for the all of those uh, property boundaries. All right, so I want to tag these, so I'm going to load in a couple tags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, Architecture, Component. All right, and then we're going to Load Family. And what I'm going to do is I'm in the U.S. Imperial Library. I'm going to go to Annotations, Civil, and I'm going to add in the two tags that it's asking me to add in the handout, which are these two guys here. We're going to go to Property Line Tag RFA and Property Tag SF for square footage. Okay, so property line tag. All right, so property line tag and property line tag square footage, SF. And I say open. All right, and say override existing version. Okay. All right, so I already had them loaded in because uh, I'd have done this already. Um, but what I'm going to do in is go in here to uh, annotate. All right, so we want to place those tags now. All right, so what I'm going to do is go tag by category, and what it does is it, it tags the um, the distance and the bearings of those property lines. So I'm going to do that for all four property lines. So I'm going to do it for the top one. All right, this one on the east, this one at the south, and this one at the west. All right, so I've got my property lines tagged. And then the last one is basically for the square footage of the entire site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the same same step, tag by category. I'm going to hover my cursor over the, the property line, but I'm not going to click yet. I'm going to hit the tab button until all four uh, boundary lines are highlighted, and then I'm going to click. All right, what that's going to do is then it's going to give me this tag here. And this is the basically the square footage of our site. So it's about eight, 18,602 square feet. So let me do that one more time real quick for you so you can see it again. All right, so to do that square footage tag, what I'm going to do is go tag by category, hover the, uh, hover the cursor over the property line, and then hit the tab button until all four boundary lines highlight, and then click, and that will give me my area tag. All right, so it comes in with, this, uh, with the um, leader box check, so if I uncheck it, it will get rid of that leader. So that's basically our, our uh, square footage of our site right here. All right, so I'm going to place that somewhere out of the way. All right. Okay, so then the next step is that we're going to do is we're going to lay out our uh, parking spaces. So we're going to lay out our parking area um, to the south of our building. We want a minimum of 25 spaces, and we're going to use the parking components tool on the, on the model and site tab. And we're going to use, this is going to be our parking space. We're going to use the 9 by 18, 90 degree parking space. All right, so 9 by 18. So let's go back and load that in. All right, so I'm going to go to the site and massing and parking components. So that's where my parking components are going to be. All right, and there's 9 by 18, 90 degrees. So basically what it is is a 90 degree parking space as opposed to an angular parking space. All right, so click on that. And I'm just going to place one here at the, uh, just here kind of in that parking area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the copy command or I could use the array command to kind of copy these over. But essentially what it is is this is a parking stripe over on this side. And you can tell there's a little line that represents the center of that parking stripe here. So what we're going to do to kind of put these on our side is I'm going to select it, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go center to center. So I'm going to go to the center of that stripe, copy it over, and then this dashed line here is the center of the next stripe. So I'm going to place it on there, and that basically creates our, our parking stripes. All right, so just going to keep copying that over. All right, but before I kind of get into that a little bit, I want to actually kind of place this on our site um, and kind of figure out whereabouts those parking uh, spaces begin. So let's go back to our handout. Okay, so the north edge of the parking area uh, is about 7 feet south of grid line E, and uh, the east side is a minimum of five feet from the property line. All right, the south edge of the parking spaces uh, should be a minimum of three feet north of the southern property line. Okay, so it's basically seven feet south of grid line E and five feet west uh, or east of the west property line. 
Okay, so let's do that. All right, so let's pick these two guys and let's move them up to grid line E. All right, then I'm going to move them back down south seven feet. All right, and then I'm going to move this over to the property line, and it's going to go over five feet. All right. All right, so I'm five feet over from the west property line and seven feet down from grid line E, and that's basically where our parking spaces are going to be created. So I'm going to just kind of use the array command to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to say 12. Group and associate, and then let's copy that over 9 feet. Alright, so that's my parking spaces there. Alright, and then I'm going to copy these over. And I need parking spaces kind of to the south, so if we go back to that handout. So you can see there's parking spaces here where you pull into the driveway, you pull into these parking spaces here, or you pull into those parking spaces down there. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the mirror command to mirror that uh, those parking spaces down um, to the south side. So let's do that. All right, let's go to Revit. All right, I'm going to select all those guys, and these are the mirror commands here. I've got mirror by line or uh, mirror by center point. Now it says here in the handout. Let's see, it says in here at the handout. Ah, there we go. Um, place a minimum of 25 parking spaces so that there is a uh, a minimum of 24 feet between the rows of parking. What that's basically saying is between this row of parking here to this row of parking here is 24 feet. So there's got to be a 24 foot gap there. So I'm gonna just go back to my Revit file and I'm gonna use a reference plane. Okay, go to reference plane. And I'm going to set an offset of 12 feet. So I want to basically find the center of that parking that uh, parking drive. So I'm going to say 12 feet. And I'm just going to draw a line here at the uh, at the bottom of oops at the bottom of those. Oh, I got to probably turn it on. Hang on. Sorry. Let me turn my reference planes on so I can see them. And let's delete these two. All right. So I'm going to go to reference plane. And I'm going to set an offset to 12 feet. All right, and that's going to find basically the center of that drive. I'm going to copy these guys, and I'm going to mirror them about the center point, which is the reference plane I just drew. So I go pick lines, pick that center point. All right, so that's how I got the second row of parking spaces over there is I basically just drew a center line here at the center of that 24 foot axis drive and I use the mirror by uh, pick axis point to mirror those over. So let me run through that one more time. So let's... You mean at the southern property line or... Um, it's, a, it's a minimum of, of four. I think, let's see. It, so I'm going to pick the so I'm going to pick my parking spaces here, and I go to the mirror by uh, pick axis. So I pick that, and then I pick that center point, and it basically then creates a whole another set of uh, another aisle of of uh, parking spaces down here to the south. All right, so there's those parking spaces there. All right, let's go back to the handout. All right, so then the next step is to uh, is to draw in those uh, curbs and the you know the curbs for the street and the setbacks uh, for the building. So there's a five foot setback that needs to be shown on the all sides of the property, and so let me just uh, put that in. So basically, setback we're going to just draw in as a dashed line. All right, so you can see here in this handout. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So what I've got here is this setback here which is a dashed line and it's five feet back from that property line so I'm gonna do that all the way around the property alright so go to the Revit file again and I'm gonna to go to the annotate tab and this is just gonna be just detail lines so just real simple detail lines. so I go to detail lines I'm gonna pick my hidden line 
I'm going to use my uh, pick lines command. So I go pick lines, hidden line, set this to five feet. All right. And I go to the property line, and I'm just going to basically offset that setback. So the really difficult part in drawing all of this uh, is drawing that property line. Doing the property line by the sketch and then uh, tagging it with these and then loading those tags and then tagging it and then placing in those parking spaces. The rest of the information that's basically on this um, on this parking space, here we've added trees as components. We just kind of added some basic landscaping in there. And then uh, the rest of this stuff is um, just detail lines. So this could be just a wide line to represent the curb that comes around there and then put a radius on it um, and then drawing in the rest of this stuff. So all that information there is just drawn by detail lines. Uh, then the rest, of some of this is some dimensions and I've got uh, some basic text in there. The really tricky part is telling what these dimensions are because probably from the handout that you guys have you can't see any of those dimensions because the handout is too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take mine, I'm going to dimension mine, and I'm going to just do a 24 by 36 PDF so that it's very clear and so you can get all those uh, dimensions that are in some of this text information that you really can't see um, at this scale. So I'll put all that information in in a 24 by 36 PDF so that you can kind of get these dimensions here. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, the rest of this stuff, let me just kind of go to a finished one. So this will be the finished, uh, kind of what it looks like at the end. So what I did is I just put in some tree, just some uh, detail components as trees in there. And uh, here's my setback line. Here's my property line. And all that is is basically just a, um, a, a thin line I use for the detail lines. And that's basically it for the uh, site plan.